Hey folks, and welcome to Drinking Alone with Friends, a podcast where three friends drink alone together. My name's Chris. Quack, quack, it's Tud. And I'm Obert. And uh, nice try, old Tud. Yeah, how'd you get it here? Where's new Tud? <laughs> the ducks took, old, or took new Tud, and now I have to fill in. They rejected their duck overlord. Oh yes, no! There's there a little bit of a revolt in the duck king, kingdom, and now I'm back. There was a duck coup, yeah. Well, that's sad. We should just end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we Everybody got so used to New Tud, you know? Like, emails flying in. I mean, regular mails flying in. Yep. <laughs> Listen. As they do. As they do. You, you play with ducks, sometimes you get the beak. That's what they say. That's what, that is exactly what they say. It's, it's happened to me, well, swan, not a duck, in the past. <laughs> <laughs> traumatizing, traumatizing stuff. Birds, birds in general, y'all. <laughs> Listen, strong stance. This podcast is anti-bird. <laughs> We're anti-bird here. We're anti-bird so, here. Let it be known. Yeah. Unfortunately, New Tud, we're just going to have to float right on by you and just move on with the episode. So, yep. so where what what have you been up to for two whole weeks? The listeners are are wanting to know what what did Tud do? So, night one, which was drinking alone with friend night, um, I went and I watched a uh, friend of the pod Dan compete on American Ninja Warrior. Uh, he had a viewing episode for for his first time being on the the show at Thimble Island Brewery down in Branford. So I went like there. Like a viewing party. Yeah. And uh, so we watched that in person. That was really cool. And then the next week, which was last week, um, I was actually in... Where was I last week? I was in New Orleans on Monday last week. Uh, but I spent the week in, in between New Orleans and Texas. And I do have to say that COVID is over. Um, based on my experience of being down in New Orleans and in Texas, you know, New Orleans looked like it was, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to say 2018, not even 2019. Like, COVID, COVID's not even being <laughs> contemplated down there. <laughs> it's, uh, we walked into a, we couldn't get, we couldn't get a place to eat for dinner. Uh, because every restaurant had uh, a line out the door. And, like, when I mean a line, I mean literal line that took two hours to get through. And then we went to a bar, the old Absinthe House. And it looked like a frat party was happening in there. Like, it was, like, ten people deep at the bar. It was, COVID didn't exist down there and then in texas it was much more like normal covid where like people kind of stayed away but they, they didn't really like it was it was just kind of like like normal but it wasn't like super it wasn't like 2018 like new orleans is that's that's a weird world down there so did you drink some absinthe i did i i've i've, I've had absinthe a few times um one time we went through and we, we did a taste test of basically the entire menu uh this time i only had one <laughs> What were your thoughts? Give us a, a mini review. It's it's not bad. It tastes a little like licorice. Um, I you know the big thing about absinthe is that you're supposedly uh, you supposedly hallucinate on it. You do not hallucinate on absinthe. Uh, I've I've drank enough of it now where I'm an expert on hallucinations on on absinthe. It does not it does not do what it says it does. Uh, but the funny thing about absinthe though is that you have to you have to melt sugar into it and you have to add water into it or else apparently it tastes like poison. I've never had straight absinthe, so uh, well, I can't. I can't. Maybe if you drink straight absinthe, then you do hallucinate and then die. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, what they do is no they put like a little to find out. <laughs> oh no! They put like a little like spoon that has holes over it with a sugar cube on top, and they light the sugar cube on fire. Um, let it burn, let it caramelize and drip into the into the absinthe, and then they on the on the side they add water. And they just kind of like add like a shot of water into the absinthe while the while the sugar is melting, and then they put out the fire with the water, dump the remaining sugar cube in there, and spin it up, and that's how they prepare an absinthe drink. That sounds like they're doing it the right way, at least. You know? Yeah, that's... I've done I've done absinthe in my 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 own on my own, but I haven't uh, done it to that fanciness level. Yeah, this I mean it is called it is called the old absinthe house. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was say, not the way that it involves a spoon and a lighter, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not, I mean, if you're, if you're a fan of, if you can get by, like, if you like um, Sambuca. Yeah. It's the licorice taste that it's not, not for me. Yeah. Same. Like, it's, it's not, there's no, you don't really taste the booze, which is nice. Like, it just tastes like licorice. Yeah, I don't think I've, I, I honestly don't know if I've ever had absinthe, um, you know. But uh, I, I, yeah, that that licorice flavor is just ugh, gross. But 
Well, that sounds like you had a, and as, as a fellow Southerner, um, yeah, no, COVID's done. We're, we're, we're through with it. Like, yeah. Uh, um, Atlanta airport looked like it was pre COVID. I mean, there was literally thousands of people in every terminal with no masks. No, you have to wear. So because it's, okay. it's it, you know, important you, distinction. Yeah. You have to wear <laughs> at all points in time in, at all points inside of an airport and on a plane, unless you're eating food, which I find very interesting. You must wear a mask. So, like, on a plane, when they walk down the aisle and they give you drinks and they give you snacks, um, the the immediate, like, six people that you're sitting next to on a plane all pull down their mask at the same time and eat their drink and their food, along with everybody else on the plane. So, for a good 15 minutes, nobody on the plane has a mask on. It's, that's very unique as well. That's interesting. I think it's because as long as you're covering your mouth with food... Mm-hmm. Then you're good. I think that totally it counts out. as a ma- it counts as a mask. It's a food mask. W- one of the best things I saw was like people like eating, so they would stick their hand up under their mask, put the food in their mouth, and then pull their hand out of their mask. Okay. So the mask was like over their face. I thought that was an interesting way of getting around. I like it. the masks that have like the hole for the straw, so you can <laughs> still drink your drink but be wearing your mask at the same time. Yeah, I mean, what do they expect you to do? Wear a mask all the time? <laughs> that sounds that sounds impossible. Oh Lord, yeah. Well, you know, we did miss you, Todd. We did miss you. So thanks for thanks for gracing us with your presence once again. Well, I'm back for right now. Um, so that's a bonus. Uh, how was how was your Father's Day, Chris? As the only father of the pod, it was good. It was good. Um, so uh, you know, I recently got news that I'm switching shifts at work. So that was pretty exciting. So this week, I'm basically. Uh, trying to go from a night shift person to a day shift person, um, which means I have one more day to do that. Uh, so so far, you're just a uh, you're just a non sleep person right now. I um, <laughs> you're I an awake up, person. <laughs> I woke up at noon, which is earlier than I normally do, and I'm trying to go to bed at a reasonable time tonight. So let's see how that works. Um, but no, I mean uh, it was good. We just we kind of just hung out. We didn't do a ton. Um, you know, just hung out with the kids. I uh, did some streaming. Um, nah, normal, normal dad stuff. We didn't do anything super special, um, unfortunately, but um, that's okay. It was my first day off this week, so it was my lounging do nothing day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you missed. You should have come over for for Tud Smokeathon 2021. Ooh, what Tud kind Smoke-a-thon. of smoke? So. Eyebrows, uh, eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows. S- brisket smoke. <laughs> oh, that's the one I thought. <laughs> yeah. So on Friday night at two, at uh, two thirty in the morning, I put a uh, thirteen pound brisket on my smoker, and then proceeded to get four hours of sleep while I monitored the, the brisket for thirteen and a half hours. Is that how you're supposed to do it? The four hours of sleep part? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't really know how the people sleep while doing it. I mean, I found like so I have a wireless uh, thermometer that may or may not be a handle and um it it alerts me with the temperature of the grill and the temperature of the meat so as the grill starts to like, dip below like the the area i give it i it wakes me up and tells me to go add more heat or <laughs> vice versa if there's too much heat it also tells me that too so this is like good tech good training techniques for someone who you know might want to become a father one day like there you go. father's day there tip, you go just start smoking meat a lot get used to like have to wake up, check the monitor, be like, uh, uh, can I go back to bed or should I get up? And then you get up and then go and do your thing and then come back to bed. You check, you check the monitor and you're like, ah, they'll be fine for five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and hope, and then sometimes hopefully they go back to, I mean, uh, go back to the right temperature. <laughs> <We're, yeah>. and, <laughs> it gets and, hot again. Uh, yeah. And, and you're like, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> awesome. More time. Oh man! So how did the brisket come out? How was the final the final uh, project? So it was my first ever brisket. Um, I think the burnt ends came out very well. I think that the brisket was not the 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 people who ate it loved it. They thought it was great. As somebody who's had you know southern you know and especially Texas because that is the land of the brisket of uh, Texas style brisket, it left something for me to be desired. But it was good enough to where I will give it another shot. Um. It's going to take a little while to get through the remainder of the 13 pounds of brisket. I think I still have about seven of it. Uh, I'll take some. You can send mail some to me. Oh, perfect. I, th- I think it will last yeah. perfectly well in the mail. 
<laughs> um, but no, I, I will definitely do another one once once this is gone. Nice. Yeah, that's one thing I've always wanted to get into is like smoking foods. Um, and Dana says I don't need it, but you know, what is she? Does what a, does she know? Everybody needs more smoked meat in their life. If if there's one thing I've learned, people need more smoked meat. It's probably yep. why you made it a handle. That is true. Yeah. But but all this smoked meat talk making me sure thirsty. has made me thirsty. Ooh. <laughs> it's beer thirty. And I'm thirsty. And I've been working like a dog all week long, so maybe something cold won't hurt me. Cause it's beer thirty. And it's time. Depart. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Indeed. Mm-hmm. And um, to to I don't know. I'm trying to intro this beer. I don't have any good segue to do that. But uh, <laughs> here's a beer, guys. Here's a beer, guys. This beer would go good with Tud's leftover brisket. The thing is, I was trying to do that, but it really wouldn't. Oh it's shit! Not a, it's not a good brisket beer. <laughs> so in a completely different direction, I'm excited to introduce to the podcast uh, Boulder Beer. Which I never heard of them before. Again, this is uh, a Vegas pickup for me. But um, this is called Shake, and it's aged in Law's whiskey barrels. It's a dark chocolate porter. Um, so don't know much about Boulder beer. I've never seen it around here. Like I said, I had to go to Vegas to find it. But um, excited to try it out. I don't know if I'm supposed to shake the can. Maybe that's what they're saying. <laughs> I somehow well, doubt I, that. I think you should shake it. Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. Uh, I'd rather have it uh, wrong than exploded, but let's see. You're not living dangerously enough. Nope. Yeah, so I thought, you know, I think when I first grabbed this beer from the fridge, I thought it was going to be like a chocolate shake type beer, but I think it's just um, dark chocolate porter aged in whiskey barrels. So I don't know. We'll find out. 8.9 hmm. ABV. Starting to pour a little bit here. This is um, Chris approved head. I think it's fair to say. Ooh, it is. yeah, that's a nice looking head right there. Yeah, got a Lasts solid a long inch, time. Just hanging out, just doing its thing around for the party. That's <laughs> what this head's doing. Yeah, not um, not overpowering kind of um, pastry stout notes here. It just smells chocolatey and portery. The uh, description on the can says it should be caramel, oaky, and soulful. I've never described a beer as soulful before. Hmm. Well, let's see if this is the first one. I w- will. I think it's this beer's got some soul in it. How much soul? Like half the soul? Uh, Two it's souls? got soul. It's got soul, an immeasurable amount of soul. Okay. So infinite souls. Not souls like spirits, soul like the music. Yeah. Um, that's what I figured it was. Yeah. Uh, you know, this isn't bad. It's um it's lighter in body than I was expecting. Uh, you know, I thought this was gonna be some kind of a lactose bomb type of a really heavy pastry stout. No, it's a good it's a good robust porter. Robust is a popular word to describe porters. I don't know. I think it's kind of a cop out <laughs> to call it porter robust, but I did it. I did it anyway. I'm falling into the tropes. <laughs> Caramel, yeah, a little bit. Not super sweet. Not super um, caramelized. That makes sense. But I do get a hint of like maybe a little bit of caramel flavor. I don't get a ton of whiskey though. For being a beer, um, you know, proudly saying it was aged in Law's whiskey barrel, which I've never heard of you. Heard of Law's whiskey, Todd? You're the whiskey spurt. No, no, no. I've never heard of it. I wonder if it's you know. I wonder if that's just the name of the distillery and they and they brew right. a, a different. Here, I'll look it up. Yeah, there we go. Todd's gonna be our fact looker checker upper. of the pod. Yeah. See, I, I like to do that, but sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm trying to get on the board. I want to be fair about it. Right, right, right. You gotta, you gotta nope. hone it in. Law, Law's is a real distillery. Um, okay, good. I kind of figured that much. <laughs> but but they make no, but the, like their brand is is Laws. Like they they just make Laws whiskey. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a good porter. Not I like probably the, not the I like best the bottles. Oh, that's cool. Oh, those are nice. Neat. neat. Good style bottle. Um, I, I'm imagining they're from Boulder. You know, Boulder's a town I've always wanted to go to, but ah, oh, same. Never been. Um. Yeah, this is a good porter. Not probably the best beer to pick out on like this 80 degree day, <laughs> but it's a good beer nonetheless. Um, nothing special about it, though. Like, it's just a porter. It's a robust porter. That's <laughs> the, the most accurate words I could use to describe it. So it'll get, it won't crack the four barrier, um, but it'll be a 375. There's nothing wrong with this beer. It's good. That's, it's pretty good. Yeah, not pretty too good. shabby. 
Yeah. It's pretty good for a robust porter. Pretty good. I want to try other stuff from Boulder Beer. Um, some so One of these days, I'll make a trip down. It's actually funny. When you mentioned Boulder Beer, I was like, I have heard of these guys before. Um, and then I looked, and I have I have had the original shake. So not aged in barrels, anything like that. Oh. So, so hmm. I don't know how or when I didn't go d- that deep into looking it up. But, but not uh, on the podcast, just you're saying I don't, you've checked it in. I don't believe it was on the podcast, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, But yeah, so... I've also had this random brewery. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm trying to figure out where it is, but it's not telling me on its website. Well, Ober, I got I, you got one of your favorite kind of beers on here, right? 21 check-ins. Oh, okay. on a Goodness. Goodness. Yeah. How so, many does the regular shake have? 170,000. Wow. Okay. And it doesn't look <laughs> anything like this, right? That's not this is definitely a different kind of shake. Uh Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, All right, now, I guess I'll oh, do the now 21. That I, now that I see what it looks like, yes, I do remember that that bottle, I believe, I checked in. Um, now that I see what the uh, what what it looks like, it looks very familiar. The regular shake. Okay. It's a um, cool-looking can. It, it is, yeah. It's a very nice, cl- very nice can. Nice cans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but uh, okay, so let's go back to the, the 21 check-in version, which I'm never sure if it's like, does somebody just like, is this a typo version of the beer that's really popular? But um, these 21 people all thought that they needed to do a separate check-in than the regular, <laughs> regular shake. It was not easy to find. Uh, let me just do a quick, nope, that's the only one. Okay, that's what I'm going with. All okay, right. um, going to go with a 4.04. Not too bad, not too bad. A little bit lower. 3.95. So okay. put it so on the board. Put it on the board. Hey, you know what? Over, you're single, in first single place. Digits. You're in first place right now. You know, this is like, I would say if this was prices right, I just spun like an 85 cents on the big wheel. It's kind of where I'm feeling like right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spun it on your first spin and you're like, ah, right. I'm going to I spun stay. on the first spin and I'm also like the first one on the showcase. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, so. you're, you're like, you could win, but I mean, ah, man, everybody goes for that dollar. Oh, damn. Damn yeah. dollar. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, I think I'm going to go since uh, Tud is still working through his pregame beer. That is uh, true. And I have a uh, I have a beer that I've been holding on to for a, uh, a little bit now, but it is an Imperial Stout, so I I'm not worried about that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. This was something I also found at the uh, that Little Ultimate Ales, which I'm a big fan of so you know shout out to them again uh and this is called uh geometry from high branch brewing company it's an imperial stout with cacao nibs cinnamon ginger and vanilla beans mm. so is it now i know that the brewery is named after a, a, a tree so is the name of the beer g i'm a tree or is it geometry no like like the math okay. like the math missed an opportunity there Broken branch. That's high, 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 high branch. branch or high, high branch. branch. Yeah, <laughs> branch. Brewery. I was like, do you know this tree that it's named after? Ah, I never heard of this. <laughs> I high know, branch right? Tree. Tud is Tud is making up a backstory to this. Brewed yeah. under a tree. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, like you know, it was always like the thing when we were in school, right? It's like geometry or geometry. I never heard that before. Right now, oh, the only reason I know of that, like pun joke is because of the toe jam and earl uh game that they came out with for the xbox that's a throwback that no one thought they'd ever think of again and there's one where it's like a disguise and he holds out a twig and he's like hey i'm a tree and like that's pretty much it <laughs> <laughs> not every good disguise that's a game that uh i would i would replay right now so let's see your can let's see the can so here's the can um kind of a neat uh very clean looking, got black label, got this little like circly thingies. Um, then that, what I the assume that, that that must be that their logo. That's their logo. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like the spirograph kind of thing that like you draw with the circles. There That's you go. There you go. The geometry logo. So, but a clean a clean looking can. I like the way it looks. Um, and now brace yourselves because this is a travesty. This beer already. This is minus five points. Um, oh boy. No, no head, no oh, head, wow. none. I thought I thought you were going to show us like a solo cup you were drinking it out of or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Like when I poured it and everything, no head, nothing. There's not. There's nothing. I'm like, what happened? What happened? 
Um, but it is an Imperial Stout. It's 10.6% alcohol. So uh, now I did take this out at the beginning of the recording, so it's been out for about 25 minutes or so. So it should be okay temperature-wise. Maybe a little bit warmer would be nice, but I'm still uh, a little disappointed with this no head that we're dealing with right now. I'm trying to get over it. I'm trying to... I'm trying to push myself through, but unfortunately, it's just not happening. It's not happening right now. So yeah, so I'm I'm excited to try it. Uh, I hope hopefully it uh, hopefully it can make up for that minus five points it already got. Um, so let's let's see. All right, so it is very good. Um, How good? Um, probably about a maybe about a four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I will say that um, it is. A, a very very good drinking temperature just off the off the top so uh no worries there um you get hit it is a strong beer it doesn't do a great job of hiding the alcohol um even with all the other stuff going on with it uh it's one of the last things you're left with is the taste of the alcohol so um you know that's that's a little off-putting to some people um but to me i i, I mean i can taste the the cinnamon and the vanilla very very strong the vanilla beans very very strong um, the cacao nibs and the ginger. I'm I'm trying to pill out the ginger. The cacao nibs are like a good base. It's not. It's a. It's super sweet up front. Um, but cacao wouldn't really necessarily do that. But uh, the vanilla beans would. So it's it's super sweet up front, and then you get hit with the cinnamon. And while you're getting that cinnamon, right, it, what what cuts through the sweetness is that alcohol, um, and it kind of all just meshes together. And then you you're kind of left with a little bit of a, a, a alcohol taste as it, as as you're finishing. But um, it's it's solid. It's very solid. Very well done. Uh, I've never heard of High Branch Brewing Company before, so uh, it's always good to try try something new. Uh, yeah, where are they from? You were too low in the tree. Too low in the tree. Uh, so they're in Concord, North Carolina, which isn't that far away from me. So it's, uh, you know, now that I'm going to be a day shift person, these like, oh man, breweries again, <gasps> breweries again. <I'm> so, <laughs> I like just realized I have four days to go to breweries now. That's amazing. Okay. Well, I was going to say like, you know, you have to work during the day shift part though, but I guess well, only, on, only on the days I work though, <laughs> but, um, okay. Uh, you know what? That, that sip was better. It was way more balanced. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm getting used to the the alcohol. So that was more balanced. And I did pull out the ginger. Right, it hits you right at, right towards the end. So it's. I mean, it's a solid beer. Um, it's not uh, the head. The no head. It's. It, it does have a thick mouth feel, which is kind of uh, also weird that it didn't have a nice frothy head. But um, but I mean, it's 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 a solid beer. Very very well done. Um, I'm gonna. I am gonna stick with a four. Um, I think. I, it, it, new untapped i'd give it a 4.1 um i'm i'm like i'm above i'm above a four on it um, you're above a four but not enough to round it to a four and a quarter right right yeah generally if i'm like four four point one five, then <laughs> then uh then I, i'd be that i'd do that but uh yeah no I, i'm sticking with my with my four from the beginning um it's it's i mean it's it's a solid beer it's a solid beer but um it's almost uh i i I don't know what would have made it better that's i think the the other issue i don't know i i can't think of what could have improved the beer maybe less more masking of the alcohol at least at first but other than that um but other than that solid beer not 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 too shabby so out of out of 127 check-ins what do you think the untapped averse thinks of this this here beer man i really i get the feeling it's gonna be high oh man I don't know. I don't know. See, that's the thing. I've never heard of High Branch, so I don't know if there's a lot of hop hype around them or not. Um, and I'm definitely not in tune as in tune with the brewery, the like the brewery scene as I used to be. So uh, I think it's gonna be high. Um, you know, I'm gonna go four twenty. I'm gonna go four twenty. Nice, nice. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> so a little high. Okay. Ooh, but um. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um so a little high but uh it was very close to what you thought um so it is a 4.12 damn damn uh okay but well you know what that means it's good enough put it on the board get on the board chris chris spun that wheel he got he got a 50 cents and then a 40 cents. Yep, he yep. had to go for the second spin. <laughs> but uh, he's on the board. I'm so. on the board. I'm on the board. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, I, I was thinking, I was like, maybe it'll be like, 
I was going to say 4.13, but then I, I don't know. Cha- I always second guess myself. I'm like, no, I know things. And then I don't, I don't know things. <laughs> yeah. I had to look up the original shake and that averages a 4.0 much closer to my rating. I would still be on the board, it's but true. Uh, these 21 people, they had yeah. to throw me off. Well, and, and the, uh, I gave the original shake a 4.0 it was it was a, Solid beer that, according That's to Untapped, that I don't remember the, clearly. Man of the people representation right there. That's right. I'm the yeah. gatekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, Tud, uh, you have, I mean, it's not wide open, but it is. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's there for you. He's got it's two pretty, spins. He's got two spins on the wheel. He's got two spins. He's got two spins. It's pretty wide open. Not as wide open as last week. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Last week we all got the the we spun over a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for trying to do the noise that I was trying to say. So, so two episodes ago, or no, well, two episodes of mine ago that I was on. So four ago, okay. four score and four episodes ago. Todd doesn't um, recognize any episodes that he's not on. He's not on. <laughs> he has <laughs> podcast object permanence issues. <laughs> I've never heard of my brother, my brother and me. I've never been on it. So so those those four episodes, um, I had mentioned that I was going to Portland that, that weekend. And then the weekend that we had Matt on from Wandering Soul, I had just gotten back from Portland, Maine. And I had gotten a bunch of boxes of barreled souls stouts that i have i've purchased as being part of their bottle club so this 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 is a very soulful episode yes so much soul so being the first episode here that we didn't have a guest i figured i would bring one obviously um so i reached into my fridge and i grabbed the one that was in there and i like that label Ooh, that That one you gotta post um you gotta post that one yeah I'll take a good picture of it, and I'll post it on the Instagram. Um, this is called Dark Matter. <laughs> nice. Um, this one in particular is the Coffee and Vanilla Dark Matter. It was bottled on 3-23-2021. It's bottle number 776 out of 1,200. Um, it's 11.2% ABV. It's an Imperial Stout with coffee and vanilla. Woo. So you guys can see they list all of the stats on the back. And their yeah. label is fucking awesome. Yeah. That's right. Nice. I didn't rec- I didn't realize till you showed me the their like Phoenix logo that uh, you had given us some of these beers. I yes. like these guys. Yeah, these guys. Um, not a lot of people know about them, and I'm, I kind of struggle to to tell people about them because I don't want anybody else to know about them because they're delicious. They're like your little secret. <laughs> yeah, they may do the best bottling um, of any brewery that I've been to in the Northeast. Uh, these guys, they 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 do IPAs and they do fruited sours, but they're Obviously, with a name like Barreled Souls, they're known for their barrel aging. Oh, um, right! All of their beer, beers are fantastic at all times. Uh, let's crack this thing open. Coffee and vanilla dark matter on the nose. I smell a shit ton of coffee. Um, which is good. I expect this after uh, the earlier beer that I had on the pregame, uh, which had uh, a, a multitude of flavors. I don't think this one's going to be as uh, difficult to, to discern the coffee and the vanilla. Uh, head, it stuck around for a little bit, but kind of dissipated a little quickly, but it's, it does have a tiny bit of head sticking around. But most barrel-aged beers, the head doesn't stick around for a long time anyways. It's just the nature of that style. Uh, let's, let's pop this in my mouth and see what I taste. So, hmm. So it tastes very much like cold brew coffee. Um, like just black, straight coffee it's not overly bitter like uh like a normal iced coffee it's a little bit more smoother like a like a cold brew but maybe like a bitter like a starbucks cold brew where it's a little bit more bitter than it is smooth like a really like um like a really super like high class and niche like coffee lovers place um it's it definitely has a little bit of bitterness to it but not a lot it's got a lot of uh, bubbles to it as well which is a i, I found to be a, a key feature of of barreled souls that a lot of their beers are are overly bubbly um chris you had the the coconut dream and i think that you commented the same that's that's the one i that's the one i remember that you gave me and it wasn't a coconut beer no i think i may have given you the one that was made with uh with grape kool-aid i think i had but anyway whatever so well, I so that i is, remember that one the grape yeah Kool-Aid i had both one. you had i had both of those but the coconut dreams I had, I think I had that on the podcast, and it was an IPA, which I was not expecting. Yeah, I think. To, oh, I actually, right. 
now that I'm thinking back on it, I think Dana had the coconut dreams on the podcast when she was on as well. Um, and not Chris. Oh, yeah. Because Chris was afraid of the coconut. Right. Scared of the nuts. Yes. Um, I find that to be a very distinct Barreled Souls thing, is that their beers tend to have a lot of carbonation, which work with their stouts. Um, so no head on this one. No, no head. No head. You and Chris it, it are def- both in the, the, that no head category. So yeah. This is the worst episode this, of the podcast. I still, got, I still got a little bit going on here. This has been, what, half an hour. I got a little little bit nice lacing on this. Yeah, no, yeah, not a lot. I mean, as you can see, it's stuck around like a tiny bit, like like a kiss, kind of. You, you more have, so than Chris. Yeah, you on have the head scale. Idea. Head scale, where one is water. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not get into that one. Oh, wait, okay. <laughs> so, it's a family podcast. <laughs> Listen yeah, to the, Ki- listen Kiwi's to not the pre- here. Let, let, let's discuss that the the head scale in the next pregame. So just, it, there we that's go. a patrons only kind of thing, I think. Yeah, there it, you fits, go. it fits the theme. <laughs> um. So so the 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 carbonation, and I'm going to call it an over carbonation. I, I think that it's it's in their canned beers. It's very overdone. Um. To the point where. Sometimes when I get their IPAs in a can, I'm not a big fan because it's just too much. On their bottled beers, there still is a lot of carbonation, but it fades away very quickly because of the just, I, I don't know if it holds as well as it does in a bottle as it does in a can. Um, this one definitely still has a lot of carbonation for a stout uh, to the point where you do get a little, uh, uh, in Chris's words, a little bit of Pringles on your tongue. Um, Thank you. Pringly. <laughs> yeah, a little pringly, but it is a very good beer. Uh, it definitely tastes like that Starbucks coffee, uh, uh, cold brew coffee, where it's a little bitter but not overly bitter, and then it fades off into a nice, subtle, like subtle, subtle, subtle vanilla flavor. Um, there's definitely a little bit of alcohol burn. It does weigh in at eleven point two percent. Um, so there's there's no really hiding behind that. Overall, though, really good beer. Uh, this one's a more of the, your traditional style. Um, barrel aged beer from them. It's not. It's not overly adjuncted. I mean, I have some beers from them that are like banana and fluff, all in a bottle that's been aging like a Weller bottle, and this or a Weller uh, bourbon barrel. This one, I don't think is aged in a bourbon barrel at all. I think it's just aged in a normal barrel. Because I mean, it does say aged, but it doesn't say in what. Still barreled, just less souls. Yes, yes, it's still barreled one soul, okay. maybe two. <laughs> um, but overall, pretty good. I think this is a, a really good beer. Uh, Barreled Souls, as I said, is one of my favorite breweries in the Northeast. Obviously, I am a uh, a Bottle Society member as well, and um, I reap the benefits of that. And I have five boxes of their beer to prove to prove that I reap the benefits of that. Oh wow! Yeah, I may have bought too much. <laughs> 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 but overall, solid beer. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give it a four. Um, okay. You know, I wish there was, you know, I, I do prefer their more adjuncty style beers, um, unlike the one that I did in the pregame. These guys know how to do adjuncts really well, and they know how to bring out all the adjuncts together. So this one just being a plain coffee, vanilla, imperial stout, it's just a, it's a, it's a really good representation of the style, but it's nothing to write home about. One thing I could, one thing if I could ask over before you tell me how many check-ins there are, can you read the yeah. description? Because they're always, their descriptions are really unique. Yeah, so I can do that. The um, the it's original not on the bottle, dark, I should say. The so I have the coffee vanilla dark matter pulled up here, but the original dark matter, I thought I got a kick out of what they said. They they have a quote for their description, and the quote is, "We are much more certain what dark matter is not than we are what it is," and that's a quote attributed to NASA, just the organization. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, th- I got a kick out of that. The uh, coffee vanilla one did not have. It just says their imperial stout dark matter finished with coffee and vanilla. So uh, there are uh, seventy nine check ins. Okay, that's not a lot. At a seventy nine check ins, that's there's a hell of a lot more Bottle Society members than seventy nine. Um, there was at <laughs> least there was at least a few hundred at the at the Bottle Society event, but not all of them use Untapped, right? But I think they would. Um, and maybe some of them are cellaring it, you know? Maybe. I think it's going to be high. Um, Barreled Souls, it, you know, it is very well thought of by everybody who's ever had it. I'm going to say 4.16. 
Okay. Damn. Chris, uh, roll, he rolled that, that wheel, spun that wheel, got 95 with a 4.19. Oh, so he's so moving close. on to the showcase for Wait. sure. When you say, I think it's going to be high, I'm always like, yes, he's going to go 4-3. Yes, four, three. he's going to go 4-3-5. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah, but we, like, as, it's, it's going to be as high. We know his, as we know historically, two. the average of, of untapped doesn't really get over 4.3. So I always, you know, hey, I never listen, go over Hey, listen to last week's episode. Uh, that's all <laughs> that I got to say. True. That is true. <laughs> yeah. We had some outliers on that one for sure. God darn it. Son of a biscuit. Ugh. Okay, well, I mean, undisputed champ um i like the fact that i went away for two weeks and i still came back as the undisputed champ i left as the champ i re- chris lost he was chris was one week away from disputing the championship but yeah. uh i got i'm putting the tally on the board we go. just a quick quick scoreboard update for folks who uh don't see it on the recording we have uh tud narrowly in the lead with eight and Chris, not far behind with six. And uh, we also have Jenna and New Ted both on the board with one each. Um, I think that's all the updates that people need to know. <laughs> so, wait, oh, over, over, talk. over, over. I think you're on the podcast every week. Can you, uh, can you inform us what your yep. tally mark nope. is? I'm also on the board. Yep. I see the big O there. <laughs> there <laughs> are some tally this, marks. Can confirm. T- plural. Tally, tally mark. marks, plural. <laughs> on the board under my name. No, I'm... Uh, Narrow, I'm on Chris's heels with with two, so <laughs> you know you have two people who who are right on your heels though, which is interesting. That is true. I do. That is true. I do. I got to get a third tally mark before I go I, back to doing cocktails. I, I, think, <laughs> I think what happens here is that if you get passed, like I think you're, I think you're voted off the island. Yeah, well, you're lucky. You're lucky. New Todd didn't get it right last week because otherwise that would have been you, we would have had to. Change the composition of the board and it would, been, it would have been bad news for old Ted. That's true. That is true. I don't know. Kiwi or Jenna could, could just come in and tie over it next time. <laughs> they, they could. I got to get my got to get my shit together. You got to get one. You know, I got to stop bringing these s- beers that have that have no ratings. But you know what? I, I'm not going to use that excuse because Ted, Ted did it just fine with like hundreds of the check ins. You got to like scour. You, know? you got to start start like like researching untapped and like. You know what like it is? Cram- is because I don't I don't like use I, I don't for an check exam. in beers. I got to start checking in my beers. You do. Uh, the more I check them in, the more I'll get the feeling of what Untap likes, what they don't like. But the thing is, even when I check them in, I don't like. I'm not like, oh, what did the Untap diverse think? I just am like, that was good. Three seven five. That was oh, amazing. Four and a half. You know, what we did not talk about before we head on into the handles. Yeah. Is I went to my first ever uh, post COVID beer festival also during this time. Oh, yeah, we yeah. we set you up for that at the beginning, and you were like, "Nah, I'm just going to talk about um, absinthe <laughs> a bunch." So, yes, I, I don't know. So this is a drinking podcast. I mean, it's not strictly beer, but we could talk about. Well, the okay, non- sorry. Uh, no, I have to talk about airplanes and masks instead <laughs> of talking about beer fests. This is this is the choices that you made with your time at the beginning of the episode. That's true. That's true. But I'm going to jump back in and I'm going to steal some more time here. And I'm going to talk about the first ever beer festival I went to, uh, which was the Rising Pint Beer Festival. As uh, Chris and Obert both know, um, they've also experienced the beer festival back in the pre-COVID days. I think like 2018, maybe 2017. Jeez, guys, we're getting old. I was living here in 2018 and Chris was not Chris was not living in Connecticut. Okay, so it was 2017 then. Right? No, we, we moved away like one month from between each other. Yeah, in 2018. Is that when we moved away? Yeah. Okay. So then it was 2017 was when you guys came. So, anyways, what it is, it is, it is like the premier Connecticut beer festival. I think, um, I think other people may dispute that, but it's the largest beer festival in the state. Um, it takes place at Rensselaer Field, and this week or this year was uh, their first year back after a COVID canceled year, and they had 50 breweries, and it wrapped around. So anybody who knows Rensselaer Field knows that on the concourse everything is covered. Except for the very back, where the where the uh, the what, I want to call it a Titan Tron, but that's not what I'm. That's not what it is. That's that's WWE. Uh, where the screen is basically where they show like videos and stuff on. Um, so everywhere underneath the concourse was a brewery. They had fifty of them. It was awesome. Uh, I believe I texted you guys the first seven breweries if at the beer festival was basically a who's who of. Uh, Connecticut breweries and it went 
it it started out with twelve with a twelve percent table, and it started out with Fat Orange Cat, Abomination, and Sky Gazer. Next to that was Tox. Next to that was Five Churches. Next to that was Cole's Road. Next to that was Alvarium. And then it went uh, Colorblind, and then Tribus, and then Hooker, and then Lawson's. Like it went like the the first the first stretch of breweries was just it was just amazing. Um, it sounds from there amazing. On, from and there on out, I don't remember anything because I was drunk. <laughs> one, one thing I wanted to say about it was like, you know, you commented that we were, all went to the brew fest together in 2017. And I was just thinking, how many of those breweries existed in 2017? None. Lawson's and Hooker. And Lawson's wasn't even really a Connecticut brewery. No, nope. right. I mean, like the CT beer scene has just exploded since then. I, I mean, I think Fat Orange Cat was a brewery then. Right. Um, but okay. Had, That's a good point. But yeah, they Fat weren't, Orange Cat. Yep. They weren't there. Um, and I think Alvarium existed. I think Alvarium was at the brew, the beer fest. But that those first those first seven breweries. I mean, they legitimately there was no space between them. It was just boom, 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 go. Uh, and they each every brewery that I mentioned had three beers. So um, I drank all three beers from all all seven of those breweries. So you're saying and, you didn't make it very far in the first hour of the brew fest. No, at one point in time, I looked at the uh, people I was with. I was with uh, Brad, uh, his girlfriend, Torian, and uh, Caitlin. And I looked at, looked at them and I said, we have to keep on moving because we're not going to make it through all 50 breweries if we don't start like making progress here. Right. That's that's but, so that's a lot of breweries. Yeah. Do you yeah, know? I mean, do you, some, did, was it the most they've ever had? Did they say? They claimed it was the most they ever had. And judging by it, I've never seen. So remember how you always got... To like the remember when you when you were there you got to the end of the line and there was like trucks blocking you so you couldn't walk any further the whole yeah. the whole stadium like, was open I like how you assume I remember anything about that day oh okay <laughs> the whole stadium was open so like once you got to like the uncovered part of the concourse like you could just you just did a big circle and you went to the other side and went back down that way and you know down that way were were other big hitting breweries too so once you loop back around um on the other side were back east uh a new brewery in connecticut called concentric um founders was also there so was goose island uh two roads phantom new england brewing company like like the who's who of connecticut breweries were there and it was just it was just incredible i mean will, even willie brew showed up this year which i don't think they were there i don't think they've ever been there before i think they just wanted to get out of the out of the building and come party yeah, I don't know. I know they're always at the Willimantic Brew Fest, but uh, they put it on, I right? I mean, that's their... yeah, yeah. I know they they sell tickets. They're a big sponsor of it, but um, it sounds like you they put the heavy hitters right up front, right out front, and yeah, the only the only like real big one that that wasn't in the heavy hitters group, which I find interesting, was New England Brewing Company. They kind of shoved it off in the corner, and I think that was because like it, you know, Nebco is able to make its own its own aura. By itself, just because it is Nebco. I mean, those guys are are great, and they know what they're doing, and they don't need to be with the with the new the new cats. Right. Well, I don't know. It sounds like any of those breweries would have been worth being a destination on the Brewfest. But it's awesome to see that they can focus. There's so many Connecticut breweries nowadays to focus on, and uh, it's, it's different than when we were there in 2017. That's for sure. Oh yeah, you guys. Next year, you guys should try to fly back just for the Rising Pint. Well, I was going to come in the 2021 that you assured me was going to happen, but I, <laughs> I, it did happen. The 2021 Just, no, the 2020 years version. Oh, well, you should come in 2022. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that it will happen, but I'm hopeful that it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say there, there was a surprise brewery of the, the beer fest, by the way. Who was it? It was Woodbury Brewing Company out of Woodbury, Connecticut. Um... They were right after the murderer's row of, of breweries that I just talked about. And they had an IPA where I sat there and I said, holy shit, this is better than, than all the ones that, that I just had. And that was from every brewery under the sun in Connecticut. Like, no way. They had, oh, it was, it reminded me of like, like early Treehouse style flavoring where I was like, this is something unique here. And that wasn't influenced at all by the last seven breweries <laughs> i mean i mean i so because i said that he did give me um give me a few free drinks at his brewery so i'm gonna go actually like soberly and try it out 
and I'll oh, report cool. back. Yeah, bring some on the pod. I want to hear about them. Yeah. yeah. Then when I got a. When you're there, do an Instagram story. There you go. Then you I go. got a dollar off uh, at Lasting Brass as well, sitting right next to me. So, gonna retire. I, I, I walked away with a lot of stuff. Uh, there may be cause there may be some <laughs> more uh, some more stuff for the the podcast coming up from this this beer fest too. So stay tuned. We got a lot of promises from 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 Drunk Tud on interviews. We'll see yeah. <laughs> how that happens. A, I, dr- t- it wasn't t- just t- Drunk I Tud. I'm not I got a lot lie. of promises from drunk other people too. I'm not going to lie. Drunk Tud is a much better uh, network networker than sober Obert. So and and both versions of me. So <laughs> yes, you, we really need Drunk Tud to be around all the time to make sure that we uh we get well. interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Big okay, stuff. so so with that. Um, much overdue honks. I've had this honk in the chamber basically for the last 20 minutes. But, uh, <laughs> here we go. Honk, 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 honk. M-O-P-T. Man of people, comma, Tud. Here he is. And um, But what before if... we get to our handles where we give wisdomy wisdom advice, we have to listen to, have to, get to listen to this song by uh, Jordan of the Wreck My Podcast celebrating our, our handles on our Frosty Young Wisdom. Jordan, take it away. Test your handle. Test your handle. Test your handle. Test your handle. Mug of wisdom! Drink. Mug of wisdom. Thank you, Jordan. Um, That's my line. You can't I'm, steal my line. I'm thank, back, thank baby. You, Jordan. I'm, st- I'm stealing lines. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so offended right now. Okay, hey, fine. That's par- part of being man of people, Tud. By the way, I don't know if I want a comma anymore. I think I want a semicolon. Man of people, semicolon, Tud. Okay, let me update the board. Hang on. I did it. It's updated. That's that's Chris, though. Oh. What is Chris's M O P C? Is that okay? <laughs> Tud is Tud is man of people. Chris, I'm the gatekeeper. We we it's fine. I think you accidentally erased one of my check marks. By the way, I'm pretty sure you did. Maybe two. No, no, you're at six. That's, that's you're no, good. I think you're good. You you're actually good. did. I think you actually did one by accident. No, he, don't try to compromise the the sanctity of the board. The the board is a uh, uh, a farce until until I take the lead and then it's then it's cool again. <laughs> okay, right I made, now i made i made chris the gatekeeper thank you <laughs> get it because the tally marks through your gate oh yeah oh, nice. i like it and m-o-p-t semicolon tud is That's that correct right. is that correct grammar i don't know Gram- i don't think gra- so grammar right in grammar yeah <laughs> news tell grammar they got to listen <laughs> All right, so uh, as as the uh, man of people, semicolon Tud, I'm going to choose, as per tradition, Chris to go first. No problem. So recently, uh, a TikTok led me to a vendor online that... Uh, oh God. What? <laughs> not this. We talked... <laughs> what? No. It's not the... It's not the... It's not, not, the, the... Thing from the not the thing from the pregame. Yeah, but we didn't talk about it on the pregame. It was before the pregame. Wait, wait. Are you not going to use like the other images as your handle? No, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh no, no, no! That was almost not our first handle out there. No, yeah. no, no. TikTok <laughs> led me to this to this vendor online. And listeners, if you want to know what we're talking about for a hey. quarter a week, pay, go to pay a dollar. Yeah, pay a pay dollar. It. Yeah. It's honestly it, this 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 pregame's worth a dollar. <laughs> this one's this yeah this one this one's worth it. <laughs> so TikTok led me down a uh, rabbit hole, and I ended up on this vendor's page. It's called Portralux, and uh, basically what they do is that they take your uh, well, they do a few things, but you can do custom prints. And what they'll do is they'll take your image and they'll actually print it onto large sheets of metal. And you can, uh, I mean, you can hang it, whatever it may be. Now, what led me to this was Pokemon cards. Uh, I saw this big metal Pokemon card sheet. And um, 
I was like, oh, that's really cool. And the TikTok was like, oh, we have free samples of free. I put air quotes, free, free samples. But uh, it was, uh, so I paid, you pay shipping and handling, which is like 12 bucks, FYI. But uh, I got my, my Portrelux card the other day. And let me tell you, it's pretty badass. Like I got a Charizard card. Hold on. I don't know if Tud saw it. I know Obert did. So that is, it's, that is pretty cool. I mean, it's a little yeah. big. Well, and this is like the small version. Like they, they do like huge ones, you know? So this one, uh, but this is for free. Um, but I got a, a Charizard card that's in my background now. Uh, but I was looking and like, they do custom stuff too. So if you have like a big portrait you want to get, or if you have a picture that you want to get blown up or whatever it may be, uh, it's a nice little service there. are I mean, it's not the least expensive thing, but you know, for all things considered, it's not not too terribly pricey. I think. Chris, uh, have, you, have you ever thought about getting yourself on a Pokemon card on the wall behind you? No, but that's a good Wait, idea. You're ruining my birthday gift for you guys. <laughs> well, my birthday gift is going to be me naked on a bearskin rug with my butt in the air on a Pokemon on card because I've yeah. seen Pokemon cards like that before. <laughs> but, uh, but um. But no, it, I, that's actually a really good idea. Artists, write in. Does anybody want to mock up no, a your dead Pokemon no, card? No, we we don't need the we don't need the bearskin rug version. <laughs> Whichever version you want to make, I'll put it on a Portrelux. I'll get it hung. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, and like I said, I think you can still get like free Pokemon card samples free if you as long as you pay shipping and handling. Um, but you know, if if you have a a picture or portrait you want to get made into a metal sign i highly suggest it it's pretty cool good quality too i mean it's pretty neat i i actually i'm i like it i want more so there you go portrelux.com and we'll put a link in the show notes all right um you know what? i'm gonna let obert go next just just for the hell of it okay you know i've been doing a lot of um phone games lately i got another one but i want to mix it up a little bit this is you know Obert, i feel like you need to buy a video game console <sighs> I have some. I have my computer too, but uh, you know they got me with the free Apple Arcade, uh, the three month free trial. So yeah, I did I've that too, to and I'm, now I'm still paying five dollars a month for it. What are you paying the five bucks a month for? What do you? What games are worth it? Nothing. Okay, my handle is unsubscribe from Apple Arcade. Save yourself <laughs> five bucks a month, and then then subscribe at a five dollar tier, which doesn't even exist for our podcast on Patreon.com. So uh, no. So we're we're a beverage podcast. We've done a lot of non-alcoholic beverages as handles. Um, I'm going to make another one, and um, I've really gotten into making my own craft iced tea lately. Um, we only I, do coffee here. We don't do iced tea. No tea. Tea is for losers. This is a coffee and beer <laughs> podcast only. <laughs> Get out of here with your tea. No, so. It's been it's been hot in Montana. I don't know if you saw the news. Weather is different in different places, but it's been hot out west um, yeah. the last couple of weeks. Oh, by the way, I don't want to come hiking in Montana if it's going to be that hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> hopefully it won't be. But if it is, uh, when you get here, I will have plenty of iced tea to drink. Uh, what my my tea recipe is, and again, this is you know you could buy iced tea at the store. It's like expensive. You can make your own for much cheaper. This is, um, here's, here's what I do. You go to either get a plastic pitcher or get one from like Walmart for five bucks. Um, you want to be like polypropylene, which I think is recyclable number four, look on the bottom, uh, or just any kind of plastic that, that can handle boiling water. Um, take, take some tea bags, look at, look at the recommendation on the box for how much water you should be using for each tea bag. Uh, I use, I've been using the Tazo brand Earl Grey tea, which says eight ounces of water for a tea bag. So I kind of do, I boil four cups of water and I use four tea bags. Put that in the pitcher, um, follow the brewing instructions on your tea, appropriate time, appropriate temperature. Very important. You don't want to, if you oversteep it, get it too hot, it'll ruin the tea. You got to follow these directions to a tea. Um, Sweetener is important. I like honey. Um, this is, and again, also if you're listening below the Mason Dixon line, turn, rate us five stars, turn off the podcast. This the rest is not for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Bye. Just, just quadruple the amount of sugar. Cause I, I like to use a couple tablespoons of, uh, honey in my, my Earl Grey tea. I think it's a nice mix. I also squirt some lemon juice bonus points. If you have real lemon, put some slices of some sliced up lemon wedges in there. I think that's the way to do it for real. But, um, 
boil, you know, make your tea, recommended time, recommended temperature, and then dump a bunch of ice in, take out the tea bags. There you go. You've made the iced tea the right way to do it. Have Have you ever heard of sun tea? I have. Um, okay. I thought I was just going to blow your mind by being, sun, over, you sun have to do tea half of that, just you, put it on your dick. Yeah, sun tea is when you take tea bags, basically, uh, and you just put them in some water and leave it outside. And it's like the cold brew version of tea, but it's lukewarm brew, basically. Right. And if it's that hot in Montana, you should be able to, you might be able to start a business selling sun tea out of your condo. Yeah. I mean, the, the stove works fine too. I also can boil water pretty quickly. Um, but sun tea's a thing. It's not my handle. Maybe it's Tud's next week. Who knows? But um, yeah, then once you're done brewing, dump ice in, cool it down. You're going to... And again, make sure you want to use the right number of the right ratio of tea bags to water because it's going to get watered down as you cool it off with all that ice. But I found that that you want iced tea to be a little bit less potent than hot tea, so you can kind of just throw it back. You can stay hydrated. You can drink a bunch of iced tea. Um, it'll still be tasty with the sugar, with the honey. I've used agave too. These are all good sweeteners out there. Agave is um, a good one. That's a yeah. And and like I said, I use Earl Grey. I like the bergamot. Uh, I also use Lipton and the black tea. I think the black tea makes a really good iced tea because it's really strong. It holds up well to the sugar and the dilution. Um, you know, that's that's where I'm coming at. It's hot out there. Stay hydrated. Don't don't drink coffee all day. Tea's a little healthier. C- citation needed. More more, <laughs> ca- more caffeine for sure. More caffeine for sure. But. Um, yeah, I, I went through a phase of making tea. I went through a tea making phase. However, it was it was it was southern style sweet tea. It, it was not not quite <laughs> It was not healthy. <laughs> no, it was not. It was definitely not healthy, but uh but it was very very good. Like I got pretty decent at making it. I don't do it anymore cuz it's literally like eight cups of sugar that you put into into like a half gallon or something like that um it's a lot of sugar but uh but it was very good and every time i have tea i'm just like man i really like tea it just never i'm not, maybe i will make healthy iced tea i'm gonna have to listen just to that. dial back dial back the the sweetness maybe a little bit yeah like to, to zero i'm gonna make it the obert way i'm gonna make over over iced tea it's good you know i think um it hits a spot on a hot summer day for sure Chris, do you guys in North Carolina have a place called McAllister's? It's like a deli, like Panera, Subway style place. If we if we do, I haven't had it. So I had their uh, sweet tea last week, and apparently they're like world famous for their sweet tea. I will. I'm not gonna lie. It might be one of the best sweet teas I've ever had in my entire life. Like it was it tasted like I was gonna get diabetes from just sniffing it, but. It definitely was amazing. I'll uh, I'll have to look it up. I don't know. I've never heard of it, but it may be. It may. I just may have never looked for it. So I'll have to look to see if there's one around me. Try this sweet tea. I like sweet tea. You you might not. It just like Taco Bell. You may just want to never try this sweet tea ever in your life. It's gonna open a bad portal for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be right back in the Mountain Dew hole. Oh no! Not again. Okay, Todd. Well, um, now that you have your semicolon. What do you got for a uh, handle here? All right. My handle this week is going to be, if you are an animal person out there, and let's say you have a cat, and, uh, you know, we all know that cats are different than dogs. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're two different species of animals. Well, as we all know that we can all teach dogs. Animal facts. Ha- animal facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what also isn't a cat? Blue whale. <laughs> yeah. True. Believe it or not. Um... So, you know, but no, I'm talking about house-dwelling animals. So, we have a cat here. His name is Simba. And he likes to think that he is a dog. So, I got curious one day to see if I could train a cat how to sit. And turns out that I, I have been very successful in my ability to teach a cat how to sit. I did this with no YouTube videos. I did this with no uh, coaching from anybody outside. Um, but I thought that I could could attempt to teach a cat to sit and it turns out that it's all based off of uh positive reinforcement with a cat when it comes to food so at first when i was feeding simba i would hold the bowl over his head and um eventually he figured out that if he sat he got fed took a little bit a couple a couple times standing there for about 10 15 minutes while he meowed at me and purred at me and rubbed against my leg and basically begged me to put the bowl down but eventually he learned that sitting was the answer and so every time that he would he would sit, I would say, good sit. 
and I pat his head and I give him some food. So over the course of time, I have just gone to sit, to giving him the command of sit when I give him food, and he started to sit, uh, knowing what I wanted. And now, without food, I can walk up to him and I can say sit, and he has learned the ability to sit. So what I'm saying is that if you are a cat owner, like like maybe somebody else on this podcast as well, it is possible to teach your cats how to do tricks like a dog. You just have to give them possible or positive reinforcement via food and or high value treats. Can you uh, get Simba to sit for us on the podcast right now? Ooh, live sitting. I want to see it. Yeah, this might be the I, first debunked handle. I don't know where he is. Simba. I think you gotta go. Ah, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Most of the job of an easy mabosh to know. Benyadine. Benyadine. Well, you gotta teach him to come running when he hears that. Get the bowl of crushed berry juice. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I do, uh. The, the poor cat, because of his name, has been tortured with, with that on numerous occasions. <laughs> Me holding him up like this. I believe it. And running around screaming that song while he just like, is like, what the hell is going on, human? No, but but yeah, definitely Um, my handle is to teach your cat how to sit. I just kind of gave you a basic overview. If you have any more questions about it, feel free to pop into the, the Discord and or shoot an email. And I'll, I'll be glad to, to give you a little bit more feedback on how to do it. Sorry, folks, I can't link to that one. Um, you know what? Actually, Todd, why don't you... I, we, we could find a YouTube video. Take No, no, no. I, this is what I want. Take a picture of your cat sitting, and we're going to upload that onto Imager or something, and we're going to put a link to that in the show notes. You want to see a picture of Todd's cat sitting? <laughs> Todd, you got you got till Wednesday to uh, get your cat to sit. We'll see if it's true. I don't know where he is. <laughs> All right, so with that, we'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, we'd like to thank the breweries who provided today's beers. I will go first and thank Barreled Souls for their coffee and vanilla dark matter as canned on 3-23-2021. I would like to thank High Branch Brewing Company for their Geometry Imperial Stout. And I want to thank Boulder Beer for their Shake Aged in Laws Whiskey Barrels. Uh, please make sure you head over to... All social media and follow us at DAWF Podcast. Also, make sure you hashtag follow the email at DAWF Podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can send us your thoughts, your concerns, and, and what you had for breakfast. And actually, we did get somebody who commented on their breakfast. Uh, it was from Enemy of the Pod Blevin. So uh, I will read it, but I'm just know that I'm hate reading it as I read this. Uh, <laughs> this morning, I had a bowl of cereal and hate listen to DAWF. Terrible as usual. Negative 20 out of 5 stars on untapped scale or whatever. So as you can see, we are more than willing to even post negative criticisms. I mean, in fact, you know, I think we even had the negative guy on the podcast at one point. So even if you want to sit there and tell us that, that your breakfast sucked, we're willing to listen to you. Let us know. Did you have bad bacon? Did you have rock hard bacon? Or did you have uh, uh, flaccid bacon? Because if you had flaccid bacon, we all know you hated your breakfast then anyways. Uh, also, make sure you head over to Discord and uh, join the conversation over there. And make sure you head over to Patreon. I'm going to let you know, people, if there's ever a time to jump in for a dollar a month, 25 cents a week, it's this week. Um, we went down a, a weird path at the very beginning, but I think it's going to be very funny uh, when you listen to that. So go head over there, dollar a month, subscribe. You get an extra episode every single week. It's short. 20 to 30 minutes every single time also make sure you head over to itunes and leave us a review and rate us five stars if you think that we are the best podcast ever a five star uh comment like uh fun banter with friends i love podcasts with great chemistry and fun banter and this one's got it love hearing about all these beers too give it a shot and that's from our good friend jordan so thank you jordan thank double you jordan. shout out Look double that. shout out so Make sure you do that as well. Uh, if you want to be cool like Jordan, you'll go over to iTunes and leave us a, a review and a five-star rating. And with that, my name's Tud. My name's Chris. And I'm Obert. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. Now, Chris, this is your last sign-off for a couple of weeks. You got anything you want to tell the audience while you're gone? Um, yeah. Oh, so maybe up I at so many points. We, we, we all agreed that no hashtags or marks can be awarded 
Well, I'm not on the podcast. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I faded the music up too high. <laughs> we couldn't hear that last part. Yeah. All right. Well, you get you guys got to know this that we cannot do any 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 marks while I'm gone. Oh, sorry. Christmas. I think we're fading. I think we're fading out now. I, I can't. I, I gotta yell as well as I can. Right now, no, 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 no. Chris, does it make you feel bad that when by the time you come back, I'm gonna be up like by like twenty? I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak in. Like, Just. <laughs> We're, we're announcing here, folks, next week is a uh, quadruple quadruple tally mark week. And we're doing it for the ratings. No. Oh, oh damn. damn. It's, it's sweeps week. It's sweeps week. <laughs> <laughs>